So 300 quid really doesn't buy you too much in 2020. You might just about be able to stretch to a soggy weekend in Bognor, but even then it'll probably be a lockdown special. I'm talking eating your fish and chips on your hotel bed while watching Holmes Under the Hammer. Or of course, you could always treat yourself to a snazzy new mobile because 2020 has actually been a pretty great year for budget blowers, although admittedly not for much else. <laughs> Now I've personally tested and reviewed dozens of blowers costing under £300 from mobile giants such as Oppo, Motorola, Realme and Xiaomi. Phones that boast brilliant battery life, impressive game and performance, dependable cameras and premium features like 90Hz or even 120Hz displays. So here's my pick of the best budget smartphones under £300 that you can buy right now at the arse end of 2020 that I've personally tested and reviewed. And for more of the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, one of my favourite smartphones in this price bracket is still the Redmi Note 9 Pro from Xiaomi. Just 250 quid bags you a fully featured phone with impressive specs all wrapped up in a proper glass frame. It's a bit of a stunner in all kinds of ways. Crammed inside is Qualcomm's Snapdragon 720G chipset, which is ideal for gaming on a budget. You can cap fools left and right in PUBG Mobile with a smooth as butter frame rate, while the usual gamer tools are on hand to block annoying messages and even record all of that hot action, so you can relive your best murders whenever you like. And battery life is also sterling, thanks to the massive 5,020 milliamp cells stuffed inside. You'll definitely not be caught short even during a super intensive day. MIUI 12 should be coming to the Note 9 Pro soon, bringing back the apps tray, thank Christ, while also adding in more features like a proper always on display. And I love kicking back with some Disney Plus on the Redmi Note 9 Pro, thanks to that mighty 6.67 inch Full HD IPS screen. Well, the Bluetooth smarts are dependable and you even get a headphone jack, huzzah. And as if that wasn't already plenty of reason to go and grab yourself one right now, then the excellent camera tech should definitely win you over. Because the Redmi is one of the very best handsets for photo and video capture at this budget price, producing very respectable results, even in quite testing conditions. And I'm also a massive fan of Xiaomi's Poco X3 NFC, which again offers insanely good hardware for just 199 quid. We're talking a 6.7 inch 120 hertz display, a Snapdragon 732G chipset and yet another huge battery. And because it's 199 quid, you can learn more about the Poco X3 NFC in my roundup of the best budget smartphones under £200 or you can go check out my full Poco X3 NFC review. Or you could always watch both because you're awesome, right? And here in the UK, Xiaomi has only just launched the fresh new Mi 10T Lite as well for just 229 of your British quids. And this once again serves up a 120Hz display as well as the Snapdragon 750G chipset and full 5G support for £229 proper mental. Sadly, I haven't had one of those in for a proper fondle yet, but hopefully, fingers crossed, really soon, so stay tuned for my full review. Now, Motorola is another one that's always worth watching out for at this budget price point, and the fresh new Moto G9 Plus is another highly likeable handset. This big blue beast costs from 269 quid here in Blighty, and while those specs aren't quite as sexy as some of the other affordable rivals here, it's still a proper step up from the older G8 Plus. Compared with the previous generation, the G9 Plus has certainly sprouted it up as well. This bad boy is a 6.8 inch hand filler. And unlike the other phones in this roundup, you get a pleasingly stock version of Android 10 with just a few little tweaks from Motorola that are genuinely useful. You gotta love those quick gestures for switching to the camera and especially the kung fu chop effort for turning on the torch. That 6.8 inch IPS screen is a bit of a blinder, pumping out natural looking visuals with the HDR10 Plus support on top, although there's no variable refresh rate to speak of. Performance is smooth thanks to the Snapdragon 730G chipset, with gamers given an extra help in hand by Moto's own gaming tools. And you also get a proper battery boost over that older Moto G8 Plus as well, with a blummin' massive 5000 milliamp cell stuffed inside of this thing. That's actually not too far behind the ruddy huge 6000 milliamp capacity battery that is packed into the Moto G9 Power. The G9 Plus package is rounded off by a particularly respectable 64 megapixel primary camera backed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle effort, plus some macro and depth sensor shenanigans too. All perfectly fine for everyday shooting, even in fairly testing conditions. So overall, the Motorola Moto G9 Plus is a solid budget blower. And sure, you don't get some of the more premium specs that you'll find in some of the rivals in this roundup, but it's great for anyone who wants more stock Android vibe without a heavy launcher slathered on top. However, if you can stretch all the way up to that £300 boundary, I would highly recommend checking out Motorola's Moto G 5G Plus instead. This packs in Qualcomm's very capable Snapdragon 765 chipset, so you can merrily game away on whatever you like with the Moto G 5G Plus. And yeah, 
yeah, as the name kind of heavily hints, you do get that 5G support built in. The display this time around is a 6.7 incher, again serving up clear Full HD Plus images, and it is an HDR10 special. But the defining feature here is that 21 by 9 cinema wide design, which means you'll get a proper widescreen view of your games or your movies. And you can basically sack off work and enjoy Netflix or some tasty Call of Duty action all afternoon long, thanks to the huge 5000 mAh battery, which will keep you murdering strangers online well into the wee hours. And don't sleep on the Oppo Reno 2Z either, which at the time of shooting can be grabbed for around the £240 mark from the likes of Carphone Warehouse here in the UK. This budget Oppo boasts a proper 6.5 inch AMOLED screen with a crisp Full HD plus resolution as well as sharp contrast and poppy colours. And it's completely notch free on the Reno 2Z as well thanks to the uber cute pop up selfie cam. And sure the 4000mAh battery isn't as flippin' enormous as some of the competition but no fear the Reno 2Z happily lasts all day even with lots of punishment helped along by that energy efficient MediaTek chipset. One manufacturer that has been making more than just ripples around this budget area in the last sort of couple of years is Realme. They've launched some phones recently which offer stunning value for money and the Realme 7 Pro certainly is no exception. This rather lovely 6.4 inch boasts an OLED screen just like the Oppo Reno 2Z not not bad at all for a fresh £279 handset, although sadly there's no fast refresh action. As well as bright and punchy visuals, you've got a stereo speaker set up with Dolby Atmos support, making this a great mini media machine. While gamers will adore that Snapdragon 720G platform, which handles the latest games on high detail levels, no worries. I found that the Realme 7 Pro's 4500mAh capacity, even though it's not one of the biggest in this roundup, easily kept me going all day long, even through the most arduous and intensive of days. And one of the real benefits of the Realme 7 Pro that you don't get in most other budget phones is the crazy fast recharge speeds, thanks to the 65 watt recharge tech. And I also really adore that 64 megapixel main rear camera as well, which rarely lets you down capturing great looking snaps. Alternatively though, if you've got an extra 20 quid stuffed in your back pocket, you can get a proper bit of future proofing with the Realme X50 5G. This is still one of my favourite phones of 2020, Boston Qualcomm's beefy Snapdragon 765G platform. Now that's similar to the Moto G 5G Plus's chipset, but you've got a boosted GPU smart here for an improved gaming experience. The Realme X50 5G was built for perforating your mates online, and you can absolutely blaze your way through online shooty extravaganzas like Call of Duty and PUBG Mobile, on top detail levels with a consistent top-notch frame rate. And just like the Moto G 5G Plus, you've got the pleasure of that built-in 5G support. And as usual with Realme smartphones, you get great battery life too, even though it's again a slightly slimmed down 4200mAh cell here. As for the rest of the phone, well that's just as stunning. You don't get any OLED tech unfortunately, unlike the Realme 7 Pro, but that 6.57 inch IPS screen is crisp and colourful, although yes you do get a big ass selfie cam stuck up there in the corner, which can thankfully be blocked out in the settings if you find it annoying. Best of all is that 120Hz refresh rate, a match for Xiaomi's Mi 10T Lite, which keeps everything looking gorgeously smooth. Overall, what a cracker. And last up, if you're all about the camera tech, you can still grab Google's Pixel 3a smartphone for just under 300 quid these days, direct from Google's online store. And yeah, it's getting on a little bit these days, but Google is still keeping it fresh and updated with the latest Android. The Pixel 3a delivers Google's incredible camera experience on a proper tight budget, so you can shoot great looking photos and crisp 4K video in pretty much any conditions. And the good news is that even now, late in 2020, Google continues to update the Pixel 3a with great new camera features to really stretch that hardware to its very limits. And I really like the rest of the phone too, from that increasingly rare compact form factor to the bright and poppy 5.6 inch OLED display. Like many of the other phones here, you get a proper headphone jack too, nice. The Snapdragon 670 chipset still offers pretty slick everyday performance, helped along by that fresh Android 11 OS. You get a very similar software experience here, even to the fresh new Pixel 5 flagship phone, complete with those regular updates and security patches. And if you do manage to find a bit more cash stuffed down the back of the sofa or whatever, then you can always upgrade to the fresher Pixel 4 a which boasts brilliant camera tech once again and fresher specs. So that right there is my personal pick of the best budget smartphones costing under £300 right now in the UK as we staggered our way towards the very arse end of probably one of the shittiest years of all time. As I say, I've personally tested out all of the smartphones that I mentioned in this roundup. You can go check out my coverage right here on Techspert. If I've missed out your own personal favourite, then apologies, I just simply probably haven't gotten around to reviewing it, sadly. So many bloody smartphones, only one Uncle Spurt. But please do let me know your own picks down in the comments below and have yourselves 
a lovely rest of the weekend. Cheers, everyone. Love you.